Picture this. It is April 1979. I am president of a Foothill De Anza Colleges Foundation. I am from here. One of the perks as president is I had the opportunity to schmooze with the celebrities when they came in to do their big, you know, events. And I had everyone that I had dinner with from President Gerald Ford to Cary Grant to a variety of individuals. And one evening, my dinner mate was a well-known national humorist and columnist. And it turned out that we had a lot in common. We both had three teenagers. Now, those of you who have gone through the teenage years know that it can be rough at times. <laughs> so as we commiserated, um, and I, my kids were actually a couple of years older than his, and I had a 19-year-old son. And I am a child of the 60s. And he knew that what, what John and I used to talk about in the Vietnam War and all that, and the draft would come up, although the draft was off the table, but there was a possibility during that time that it would be coming to back up again. And so I said, you know what we ought to do? Instead of the draft, why don't we take away their cars for two years? <laughs> Think about the lives you would save. Think about the accidents that would be reduced. Think about the gasoline that would be reduced. Think about, you know, insurance rates would go down. I, I had this laundry list, and we laughed about it. We had a good time. He gave a wonderful presentation, and we went, you know, we dropped him off at the hotel, and then I went out to Mexico where I was engaged to um, do a series of programs. And when I was there, I picked up a copy of the Los Angeles Times. And I'm sitting out by the, in the sun, because I'm a, a sun goddess. And um, I all of a sudden sat up, because there was his column. And in it was a lanky teenager with a gas pump leaning against his car. And all my ideas <laughs> laid out. The epiphany that came in was, kiddo, if you don't start taking your own ideas and getting them out, other people will. When I got back, there was a letter from him saying, really enjoyed meeting you. <laughs> and you might look for some of your ideas in a future column. And I said to myself, future? <laughs> We're talking past tense. And it was signed, cheers, Art Bookwald. <laughs> From that, I made a phone call, because I lived in Palo Alto at the time. And I called one of my clients, who was the editor of the Pali Times. And I said, Jack, I've got, you know, I've been teaching these classes for women on money for years. You know, I need to get it out of my head. How many of you have wanted to get stuff just out of your head? You just got to get it out of your head. I needed to get it out of my head. And, and of course, there was only one book in me, right? No one told me that books breed more books. <laughs> and so I needed to get it out of my head, but I didn't know how to write a book. I was clueless. I was an avid reader, but I was clueless. How many of you have been in that spot? I am clueless. So I said, can you help me? He said, I don't have my book. But you know what? One of my sports writers writes novels on the side. So I said, well, can I talk to him? April 1979. So I met with Phil. He liked what I do, you know, what I was doing and I was writing about. And I agreed to pay him, gulp, back in 1979, $7,500 to teach me how to write a book. Oh my God, oh my God. So Phil came into my office once a week, he flipped on the tape recorder and he says, you start talking. And I talked my entire one day course. And then he took it away, 
He transcribed it. He came back. We started piecing it together. And he says, you know, I really like what you're doing. I'm going to introduce you to my agent. And uh, we took it back. We had multiple offers. I signed with St. Martin's Press. It was very successful. We had three printings in three weeks. It landed me on Good Morning America, cover a magazine. And I thought, you know, that's the way it was done. You know, I, you know, they flew me first class. I stayed at the Waldorf Astoria. I went on on author's tours. I thought that's the way all authors were treated. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Was I in La La Land, eh? It's not the way it's done. But I had, a, you know, a great journey. And then Simon & Schuster came knocking on my door, and they beckoned away. And then William Morris says, oh, we need you, we need you, we need you. And, um, and I went that route. Um, until, and I did multiple printings um, and multiple books, and I did with all the big boys. So it, my transition happened really in 2000, and I started paying attention to really, and I was making decent money from this, but I started paying attention because I was really speaking, you know, I was all over the place speaking. And I wasn't really hauling books with me because I relied on people going to bookstores and that kind of stuff to find me. And then a client who was in Seattle said, you know, we're really looking forward to having you come and speak. Do you think you could talk to the publisher and get a discount if we order some books? The book that they wanted, I had just taken back the rights of. And I had bought all the books that were left over. That was only 60. So I said, surely no one wants more than 60 books, right? I can handle this. And they said, um, OK, so we would like to have 1,000 books. <laughs> so I had a conversation with the plant in the corner. And we decided we could do it. And I had now to jump into becoming a publisher. So the good news is that one of the people who I found in Colorado to help me, um, was also did freelancing and she had actually worked on one of my books with Josie Bass. So Ronnie was there. Then I found the cover designer, you know, and I knew I had to do rewrites on it. And then what I, the only thing I screwed up on was the printing because I didn't understand the printing. Um, and I, and it was fast. I had to fast track this baby plus I had to do massive rewrites on what I wanted to do. And I was able to negotiate enough money for their 1,000 books to pay for 2,000 books in the whole enchilada. So we founded Mile High Press, the Mile High City now, as we, there you go. Um, so th then we had that, and we were off and running, and we actually never looked back from that. Because then we started learning the dollars and cents and cents of publishing. And that's critical what you do. So as a book shepherd, I don't care if you publish with New York or you publish on your own. You just need to know what you're doing in the process. And there are times absolutely that New York should be your partner. But there are also times you don't need New York. And maybe it's the wrong partner. So you really need to really understand what's going on. So we're going to you find out I talk fast um, as we go through here. Uh, I got a lot of slides, but in the beginning, it feels like you are so alone. How many of you felt alone in this process? Okay, so what a resource of talent you have in this room. And I am thinking, oh my God, you people need to join authoru.org, several of you designers, you evil people, we need you. We can, I can just plummet business into you. We need more people that do the services that many of you do. Um, but you've got to learn to expect the unexpected in your journey as you go along. It's very important um, to do this in the process. Expect the unexpected. It happens in all kinds of arenas. So money does not make the world go around. That's a myth. What does is problems. Problems make the world go around. And you non how many nonfiction writers do I have here? You are the gift to the world. And the fiction writers, do you solve problems? Absolutely. You entertain, you supply humor, you give people the outlet, you do all those things. Problems are our friend. They're your best friend. You've got the answers, the solutions, the soothing. You can take care of the, all the pains. So you have to ask the question, is there a book in you? And you have to really, why am I publishing? Well, I really don't want to make money. Really? <laughs> Really, if you don't make some money unless you've got a super duper trust fund, 
you've got to have some funds to come in to keep the vision going. You want some cash flow. So why publish? What's your topic? Very clearly, succinctly, what's your topic? You need to know who's your crowd. Now we're going to come back to this because this is where most authors fail miserably in who's your crowd. All right, why are you creating and writing the book? Is it for credibility? Is it for recognition? Is it for positioning? Is it to becoming engaged and being brought in as a speaker? Is it to really sell a gazillion books? Why are you writing? And what are you willing to invest? And investment comes in multiple forms with that. All right, what's your time commitment? What kind of format is for you? Now, you know, ebook, people buzz about ebook, but still 70% of books are what? They're paper. And here's the data that's going down in ebook. People are not retaining. They're getting this in classrooms, they're getting it in all the documentaries that are coming to that, that the, it's failure. CU, Colorado University just did a massive study. You know what the students would rather have and they're all being forced into the e-world? They'd rather have paper. paper. And you know why? Because they're on their tablets and stuff. Ding, ding, <laughs> <laughs> they are totally unfocused. Totally unfocused. So what you, how the format you choose, which is kind of maybe you need all of them, you got to think of like of a menu. You go to an Italian restaurant, is it spaghetti tonight? Is it lasagna? Is it chicken part of what, You know, what are you having? You have to be able to offer it to those people, what you have to go. So who is on your team? This is a critical area. And once you develop your team, you start kind of flowing. They understand your voice. They get your vision. They get your, your colors. When I created Author You, um, um, this book, which we're going to be doing the intense on this afternoon, when, when, when I did this, it was really designed originally in this kind of format. And I went to a workshop one day, and I started thinking, how many of you get little ideas, all of a sudden you're distracted, <laughs> little ideas <laughs> often. So I had this little idea, and... Um, I called my designer and I said, Nick, I have an idea. You know the book you've already laid out? <laughs> oh, no. I have an idea. I want to throw it out. Oh, I'm not going to throw the content out. I actually want to add a little bit more. But I have a different vision. I don't want to do this six by nine, which is really now five and a half by eight and a half, or five by eight now. But I, I didn't want to do that. I, I, how about a 7 by 10? How about going into full color throughout? How about adding all these kind of graphics? How about really making that integrated workbook that I always talk about and I teach? How, how, about, how about we bring another illustrator in and do so? How about dead silence? And then he came back and said, it will work. Get me the new content and let's go into it and start putting it together. And I had to terminate the illustrator that I first hired that I already prepaid. You know that deposit thing? I had prepaid because I said, here was the, we had a three hour deal, but the summing up, listen, I want something, I like whimsy, I'm quirky. I wanted a little whimsy. I wanted something colorful. I wanted it warm. I wanted it safe. I wanted people, my new authors or any ongoing authors to come in that they felt comfortable and familiar. She came back with a castle. Cold, dark, remote. I knew I had what? A wrong fit. When you run into things that are wrong fit, what do you have to do? Terminate. Amputate immediately. I knew I wasn't going to get my money back. I knew that wasn't going to happen. But I sent an email to an illustrator, to another illustrator, who I love his work, 11 o'clock at night, and I said, Don, picture this, I'm on my knees. It's not working. Here's what I need, two paragraphs. The next morning, he came back with my sheepy guy, the village, and the book or bust. He had it. All right, so that's what you have to do sometimes. You keep moving around. So who's on your publishing team? And then you have to always ask this, what success look like for you? And really clearly identify it. Is it having accolades? Is it having awards? Is it making gazoo monies? Is it being called in? Is it having Fox or CNN call you and say, hey, we need you here right now? What is success? 
critical to understand in the process. So we're going to go through a ton of publishing tips. Um, but the first one is, number one, you've got this on your handout, this is a business. Understand, authoring and publishing is a business from the get-go, and too few authors get this integrated into their DNA. Change your MO. You've got to understand and get there. So when you look at that, you've got to understand, is this a hobby? Are you building the business, or is it just kind of you're diddling and playing around with it? So for P, people that I work with, I have to ask this question right up front. Because if it's a hobby, we are a wrong fit. And it's better just to terminate the call at this point. You know, I want to move you so you're successful. Second, you've got to really understand what's your break even. How many books do I have to sell to now be moving into true cash flow? So we do that at the very beginning. And then, you know, you've all been through that. You know the traditional, the door number one, door number two is self. Self-publishing to me is still often more in the vanity area. So that I'm going to talk about the predators, but anything that smacks of, of the predators makes me goofy because of the damage I see with so many of them and the things that we've had to bail out um, that go on. And then you've got the small press or the indie publisher, which is what most of you are trying to go on. So which door is the right thing for you? So it's understand to know what is going on. This is kind of where you're looking at some of the numbers that are going out. But traditionally, most authors, especially in the small press, the, the vanity press, the self-publishing, they are lucky to sell 100 copies. You are aware of that, are you not? Well, I don't think that's very successful. Um, on that. But even in, in New York, um, that you're seeing that we're getting feedback again that the, traditionally that the mid-list, if you were to sell to New York, most of you are going to probably be mid-list type. You're not going to be Dan Brown, although that would be exciting to have one of you here. Um, but that you're going to be sitting and looking at around 5,000 copies. If you can get up to 10 and 20,000, you start getting their attention. Um, but that's really kind of typically, uh, f fiction will be at a lesser arena on that. Um, but here's just kind of a breakdown for 15 bucks, 25. When I first started publishing with New York, we got paid not on net. That was something that came up, you know, just really not too, too long ago. We were paid our royalties on the full retail price. That's, that's the old days. That's 79. That's it. Is that not right, Michael? Old days, retail price, retail price. And then that evolution, I, I think it was Simon & Schuster, all of a sudden all, they started telling people on their, uh, their contracts, we're switching you to net, um, which is like a 55% discount from those prices or whatever they get in. So your prices start dramatically changing. And if you look through here, I don't know if this little guy works, maybe not, um, that if you're selling that 5,000 mark, and on, on a trade paper, you're looking around 3,000 bucks to maybe 5,600. That's not a lot of money. We're not even talking about our IRA. It's not a lot of money. But if you were a New York snob, you know, that was prestige. But here's what I always like to say that, um, I mean, it's always fun for me when Tattered Cover, which is my big independent bookstore in Colorado, will say, well, what's Mile High, publishing, Mile High Press publishing this year? I said, well, you know, we've got four new books coming out this year. We've got two other authors we're publishing, and I've got a new book. So that's kind of fun. But rarely does anyone say, oh, 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 oh. what is Penguin publishing this year? <laughs> uh, oh, it's a, new, it's a new random book. I know it's a new random house, but I'm, I know I'm going to get that. Oh, Harper's got a new book out. We, we're going to rush to it. Don't you go buy a book because it eases the pain, it solves the problem, it entertains you, you know the author. So the single most important thing in this business of publishing is you need to understand is you, Woody, you, David, you, Lee, are the brand. And how you have to build that up is you're hot that your words bring value or entertainment or fill in the blank. Branding is critical from the get-go. So with, with Baba here, where you've got this, these member sites, your profiles, that Judy is saying, hey, come on board. For those of you who don't even have your books, 
Come on board. You're the author of the forthcoming fill in the blank. I don't care if you change the title. Get it out there. Get your bragging rights established and start drilling in and getting your roots. Does that make sense? It's critical. You can change it. I mean, how many of you wear the same stuff you wore last year? We change, but there's got to be some consistency. There's got to be some consistency as you go along. So understand some numbers. Now here's some wholesalers that say, okay, I'm going to pub whoops, I'm going to publish it, and um, I'm going to do it myself, and I'm going to go through the bookstores, and um, or I'm going to do Amazon, or I'm going to fill in the blank, and there's going to be a 55% discounting. But you need to understand what your costs are, where your break evens come in. So when I do books, I budget for my layout and my editing and stuff and, and, and the cover type design, well, around five to $6,000. That's what I put in for my budgets for the quality of books that we do. So printing, I'm going to go look. I'm getting bids, and it's depending upon where you're, what kind of printing you do, and, and those kind of thing. Like my new little book, um, Snappy Sassy Salty, this is, this is officially coming out this summer that it's got deckled edges. If you don't know what deckled edges is, those really rough, they're, it's expensive. It's an expensive book to do in print. Um, and doing that. So th these are just oddballs, uh, numbers that we work through. But, but the key in printing, of course, is volume. And, uh, and this would be an offset type thing. It's not a print on demand. Print on demand is not a type of publishing. It is a type of printing. It's a type of printing. All right, so bring total expenses. Well, if I'm using wholesalers, if I'm doing a 55% discount, if I sell 1,000 books, I'm in the hole around 2,700 bucks if I pay what I pay. Now, if you reduce dramatically your layout cost and your cover cost, I mean, I can get great covers for under 500 bucks in the 500 range because of the way I have all my deals worked out. But that if you, you bring that down, you know, well, I, I, I certainly bring an area and I could be break even, but I've got to have what? A game plan on how I'm going to market. And then here's the problem with most of us in authoring. We just want to write. I just want to write. I just want to write. Leave me alone. <laughs> I want to write. Here's what you must do. When your book is done, you're done. You are now the CMO. You're the chief marketing officer. You have a product. Your responsibility is to push the product. OK, that's my black and white self coming out. All right, so that's where you sit there. Now, and you have this page on the back of your, did you make the handout for this? You do? Yeah, OK. So <clears throat> you have this on the back. No, those are mine. I brought those. All right. Okay, those are not in my handouts that I had. Okay. Oh, it's got to be in the handout I sent to you. Okay. All right. If you don't, we'll get it to you. All right. So this would be this would be one was that was on the paper. Now this would be on the hardback or a higher expensive. Like on my books, all my paper books, we put flaps on them. We charge more money on it. I like the dust jacket capability. I like the higher quality feel to it. Um, that's just what our publishing company does. So that if you do it with a $25 pop um, and that it may be too expensive for a bookstore, that's a whole other discussion. But I can go into a profitability a lot faster. Now, if you figure out my option number three is I've gone, I went solo a long time ago when I started, when that call came in, we'd like a thousand books. That got my attention. Bulk buying, premium placements, those kind of things got my attention. So with that, there's a lot of mentors, mentors out here. They're sitting in this room. But publishing solo, I figured out that if I sold 1,000 copies at 15, I would gross $15,000. My maximum cost would be $9,400, and it could come in much less. But I would walk out way with more money more money in the process. And of course, if I started figuring out, and, and I've got you know, many, many of my books have sold many, 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 many thousands, I started thinking that I could make a living with my mouth and my work. And that was the game plan. 
So that became part of my platform in moving that out. And then this would be the numbers for the $25 book. And all of a sudden you're talking out, wait a minute, you mean if I sold 10,000 copies, I can make a quarter of a million? If I sold 10,000 copies via New York, would I make a quarter of a million dollars? Uh, 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 uh. No, no. So there are certain things that I was looking at. And that was for my personal strategy as I built and moved forward with that. So if I was to sum up this, you have this, this is one of the ones. If I was to look on my profitability, if I was selling it with my mouth, so to speak, I was out there on a platform, if I was moving it away, and when I do my whole speaking workshops, which I'll be, you know, I have an event I do in August that's just focused totally on how do you structure your speech and you do all that, that when I did that, I could tell you that when I spoke and did my workshops, I sold to at least 40% of the crowd, at least 40 Of that, of that, half of them bought more than one book. Okay, so my personal record was during a four-hour, five-hour period, I sold $16,000 in one book. That was 566 books at a crack at, at that time. But that's what you can do when you start strategizing. Now, does that happen overnight? No. Publishing is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And what happens with so many people, they get frustrated. They think, okay, I've done the book. Let it flow. It doesn't flow. You gotta flow and go to it, all right? So with that, now, looking at your, what your cost is, your break even, you need to come down and kind of put that together. I, I, I lay this out, but what's my title? How many copies of my printing? What's the cost of my cover? Editing layout, blah, 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 blah. What's my total cost of publishing? Then therefore, i.e., what is my cost per book? How many books do I have to sell to get to cash flow positive? I know that from the beginning because then my strategy goes into play, okay, kiddo, what can you do to pre-sell books so you get to that a lot sooner? And I start pre-selling a book six months before a book's ready, okay? Um, I guess you don't, All right? You don't. So. No, that's not the cost of the book. I need to know what the cost of the book is. Because promotional budget, it's almost like publicity. That could be a money pit. So you have to really come into play. And, and the reality is I learned early on I am the promotional budget. And I, and I did most of that myself. I didn't hire that out. I learned how to do it. And, and how, did I get on how did I get on Oprah? I pitched it. I learned how to pitch it. How did I go on Good Morning? I learned how to pitch it. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't understand. So you don't count the promotion cost it's, in with the... It's um, not the beginning cost of your book. Okay, so you just it's don't... It's not the beginning, beginning yeah. Got it. What about the development cost if you are going to the publisher? Development could go into consultants. Or where, I mean, what, what do you consider development? Um, actually preparing the book to go through preparation to publish it. Uh, you mean the cost of editing? Uh, I would know it could include editing pre the cover. So that if you, if you sign up with a banner to publish it... Please don't do that. That's a cost. That's a true cost. But but if you're in if any if you're into any of a pa that let's just call it a packager. If you're working with a packager, they're going to offer you maybe some layout, maybe some cover design. Maybe those are all the costs. That's a cost. Okay. Anything you fork over money could be research. Like I you know I used to do extensive interviews. I've done over ten thousand one on one interviews with people. Sometimes I had to fly to them. That's a cost. Okay. All right, so publishing predators, number two, they are out there. And one of the things, and it's very interesting because I'm kind of liking what Ingram Spark, I had Robin Cutler in at our Author U event here um, last month, and that one of the things is that I think that they will raise the game, the quality of the game, because they are Ingram into the more packaging type of areas. But there's a lot of people out there, and you know, there's a lot of confusion that we go on in the development of what we have um, as you go down. And there is seduction out there. And when people all of a sudden realize, you know, there's a lot of money to be made on people who are naive, people who don't know, people who make, I mean, we, how many of you have made any mistakes in publishing? Yeah. I think I'm the queen of it. 
So that if you, you go through that there's a lot of things that you can lure people in because it sounds good, it looks good, fill in the blank. So uh, don't, don't fear the critic who attacks you. You want to fear the fakes who surround you. And there are a lot of them out here who say that they are experts in publishing. We will publish your book for $297. Fat chance. So you want to look for the BS det detector um, for really get out there. We guarantee you're going to be a bestseller. We are going to soar your sales. We're going to give you mega media coverage. We're going to make you a stellar book reviews. We are going to guarantee you are going to get stellar book reviews. Um, your book will look as good as any New York publisher, and by God, we'll do it for under 600 bucks. Fat chance. Fat chance. You have to compete. Compete with really what's coming out of New York. Your book needs to look like it has a New York cover on it. It's imperative in the process because books, covers, sell books. Oh, Oprah or Ellen or Rachel or Martha or everybody's going to love it. You know, and there's a lot. <laughs> so what you want to do is look for the truth where you can get it. All right, so in looking at, here's what I want you to do. Anybody you're considering working with, you Google them. Put the word complaint behind their name. Put the word scam behind their name. Put the word rip off behind their name. Put the word lawsuit behind their name. Put the word con behind their name. Put the word scam behind their name. Your responsibility is to read, 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 and it's author beware. It's author beware. If you go to, uh, someone over here said LinkedIn groups. Um, we, we start, Author U has a LinkedIn group. We have just kissed 5,000 members on it. It had 60 two summers ago. And then I decided, you know what, I need to work on building this little sucker up. Uh, author U, the letter U, on, just join. And it's so much fun because they're from all over the world. LinkedIn is lovely like that. And the two very establishing uh, streams, one started off with a question, now has 400 comments. Wow. And on the LinkedIn groups, they're not one-liners. They go into the story. Mm -hmm. And it started off with, I'm thinking about publishing with, uh, with Balboa Press. I mean, it's a Christian publisher. It must be OK. And then all of a sudden, the floodgates from people who felt that they had been screwed, blued, and tattooed opened up. You read that stuff. Does it make sense what they're saying? Is it logical? Did maybe they did get misrepresented? I mean, what's going on in that process? So you need to read that. Those forums are out there. Those forums are out there. Take advantage of them. Read everything. Do the searches. All right. So one of the things that you want to look at, publishing predators will love you until your credit card maxes out. <laughs> and that is the truth. That is the truth. All right, so um, we're New York publishers. We can get you top media coverage. We guarantee book reviews in the top markets. We only work with the top designers. If you sign with us, a senior editor will, with our affiliate New York Publish, will make sure that your book is looked at. Oh, yeah. Um, we will put your book on our front list. What's that mean? We will get your book in the major bookstores. Those are all promises that they lure people in. We love your book. Oh, we love it, love, love, love. Well, you know what? We only, we only publish 40 books a year. I mean, we, we have over 7,000 entries, but we only do 40. And you know what? You're the one. And what's your credit card number? That's kind of the thing that goes on. Your book is just perfect the way it is. <laughs> There isn't a book that doesn't need editing. There isn't a book. And the books we do, we have three sets of editors. We've got a content development editor, we've got the copy, and then we have what we call the cold eye. Cold eye is not allowed to see a book until after it's formally laid out. The book has to be printed out. They will get that book at that time. And guess what shows up? Oh my god. All right, what to pay for reasonably priced. So. If you're looking for what to pay with people, you know, people who go, it's anywhere from 10,000 bucks up. I saw someone come in with 80,000 quote for a book one day. 
Um, editing content, uh, content development editing, 45 bucks an hour and up. Copy could be 25 and up. Cold eye varies. You know, I have a flat fixed rate. I, I have someone just lock in for that. By cold eye, we often, I mean, that's traditionally called proofreading, right? No, copy editing would be your proof. What's, that's a part of proof. What's cold eye? Cold eye is only after it's been formally laid out. Yeah, that's, I guess, what I think of as proofreading. Too. Yeah. Oh, uh, quote marks that are backwards, mix, missing punctuation, a word that went missing. All of a sudden, a sentence, you know, and all of a sudden, boop, it drops down. You know, got broken up in the layout. They're looking for captions that got screwed up. I mean, it, it happens, doesn't it, those of you? Mm -hmm. it, it happens. Yeah. It happens. But you need someone who has not been in that book because guess what? We don't see it anymore. Because we know what it's supposed to say. We know that that, that question mark is there. We know. We know. An hour. Okay. Yeah. Hour. Yeah. All right. And, and for, for a cover, um, uh, I, uh, if, if someone who writes cover and who, someone who writes your, your back cover copy, they better have marketing chutzpah. They better understand marketing, marketing, marketing. And what you do not do on a back cover is you don't repeat the title of your book on the headline. This is a marketing opportunity. When people look at a book, well, you got, you got anywhere from three to seven seconds for that book cover. Flip over. This is your content, your sales, blah, 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 blah. It better have buy points. For example, I have a book called, uh, I did a lot of work in healthcare. Uh, my doctorate's in sabotage, specifically why women undermine other women. And one of my books, um, the, the healthcare field, when they discovered me, I ended up writing books for them. One of the books that did extraordinarily well was called Stabotage. The subtitle was How to Deal with Pit Bull Skunks, Snakes, Scorpions, and Slugs in the Healthcare Workplace. If you worked in healthcare, you knew exactly who that was for. You knew exactly who it was for. On the back cover, the headline was, Are Stabotors in Your Midst? Five bullet points. One of them was, Do You Have to Work with Pit Bulls with Lipstick? <laughs> By the third bullet, that book was sold. They didn't have to read any more. That's what good marketing copy will do for you. Learn how to do it or you engage with someone who rocks in that. All right, your interior and nonfiction is going to be, depending upon the size of it, it's going to be also what kind of art you bring into play. And remember, photos are art. Call-outs are art. But you need for that interior design, if you're writing books that are just text, 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 line after text, after text, after text, you need to get over that. Because people need some eye candy. They need help. They need a break on that. What kind of printing? Is it going to be a pit dead? Is it going to be digital? Is it going to be offset? What are you going to do? Is audio, ebook, fill in the blank? All right, what, be your players. It's all going to have variables on there on what the costs are. All right, so what can you expect to pay? Distribution, they, not only do they take a discount out, but they, some of them are going to take now, they're not doing this for free. They're going to charge you for storage. They're going to take a percentage of your billables. They will charge you going out, and guess what? If books come back from who, where? The bookstore, they will charge you coming back in. Be really clear because you can go into shell shock and lose a lot of money here. If your goal is to have your books in bookstores. Your goal, your marketing goal needs to be, I am going to work my tush off to drive people to bookstores. And if you don't support the bookstores, they are not going to support you. You need to get that. Get that clearly. So consulting, you know, there's hourly and projects, people marketing. Um, uh, kind of a number you can use is budget, like two bucks a book f for your books on planning during an 18-month period and pushing that out. And then publicity is going to be a minimum if you're hiring someone. And now, you may hire someone to do a virtual blog tour, which could be extraordinarily effective on that. So that, and people charge around 2000 and up for doing, running those. And there are publicists who specialize in virtual blog tours for authors. That's their game. And, um, and some of them do very, very well. All right, so your fleece detector, that usually there's no transparency. It's pr promised accounting that never appears. Um, it's tough to get numbers. 
pushing additional and multiple products. This is one of the key things. Oh, we'll publish your book for $3.97. But all of a sudden, you stop getting barn barred. Oh, you need this. You need this add-on. You need this. Mar oh, we have this fabulous marketing thing for $14,999. Only $14,999. Um, we, we have, you know, well, your editing needs a little help. But we have a little package for $3,999 you can use. Um, they keep pushing multiple things. And I remember one guy who called me from Alabama, and I said, why did you sign with them? He says, I, I just wanted to stop the phone calls. Oh. <laughs> All right, telling you that you need multi-thousands. I've, I've had some of these groups say, well, you have to buy 10,000 copies to get, a, you know, bring your, your price down to, you know, $3 a book. Oh, please, please. There, there's a constant internal turnover of that team. That's very common with a lot of these groups. And then time just runs away. And at best, the things are probably mediocre. Um, mediocre when you come along, and there's you know, just the copy, the marketing, it co just comes across as inferior um, overall. So those are detectors that you can look at, and it rarely can, I can look at a book and really quickly tell who's been the players in it. Yeah? I'm sorry, I asked two quick questions. Is it too late to do, I just published my second book, is it too late to do a virtual blog tour after it was published? Great question. First? She's just done her second book. Congratulations. Is it too late to do a virtual blog tour? No, 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 no. No. I can I ask one more question? So I published with Ingram Spark, so I make okay. sure I'm in the database, I have a discount, it's fully returnable, um, all the things at bookstores, all the buzzwords for bookstores. Uh -huh. I'm sending out media kits, mailing them instead of... Um, oh, the old-fashioned okay, way. I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, you'll probably get more attention. Okay. All right, so she's doing media kits, she's now snail mailing them. And, and by the way, although, Judy, I'm interested in how to guarantee getting my e e emails open, but the reality is, one of the most successful book marketing things I did was with postcards. Oh, yeah. Postcards. I love postcards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm a librarian at, as a PL, uh -huh. and I know from my experience that when someone emails me, it's easier to discard than all right. when well, somebody... Well, you are um, hearing it right from the mouth. When I get all these emails, it's so much easier to discard. When I get something in front of me, guess what? I might hold on to it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I can come back and do it. Yes. So snail mail. Yes. Okay. okay. okay? So the, the reality is, and your name is, I don't see My a name. My name is Grace Mattioli. Grace. And the, I just the, want to tell you, one of the snail mail media kits I sent was to Tattered Cover. Mm -hmm. so, um. They're a wonderful bookstore. <laughs> you don't know the Tattered it Cover. Great. It's a wonderful bookstore. Um, that, that you'll get their attention. And, you know, the, the author liaison at the Tattered Cover is a woman by the name of Anita Spiker. A-N-N-I-T-A -N -N Spiker. Web's uh, email is anita.spiker at tatteredcover.com. That's my gift to you. All right, so, Thank you so much. you're welcome. Learn, and, and they speak with a forked tongue. All right, so those kind of things, um, that's what happens with the, the fleecers. All right, so what to do if you've been swindled? Oh, my gosh. Always pay for something with a credit card. The first thing you do is you call the credit card. I have been misrepresented. I have been misinformed. I have been sent things that are inferior. Get it off your credit card. Start challenging. American Express is the, the kisser. They will they work with you very aggressively on that. I found also Bank of America Visa does with those things. Document conversations, put names down, times, save all your emails. When I've got in and negotiated with clients who have been kind of shafted, I've had all this stuff and I've been able to actually get several all their monies back in the process. Make sure you hold them accountable. Don't keep buying services. Not like that guy from Alabama to get rid of them. Okay? And then request your money back. Cite a violation of contract, shoddy services, misrepresentation, state times, day of view, documentation. You have to be persistent here. Persistent. And set timelines. You've got to hold them to them. All right? So the, if, you've, if you're just feeling it's not working, you need to get into it. Now, sometimes things don't work for different reasons. Sometimes things are a wrong fit. Maybe you put, you know, maybe you turned in stuff that wasn't so hot, because that sometimes happens too. All right, why you must avoid any publicist who promises your coverage of top tier market. They can't promise you coverage. In fact, the thing about publicity is there are no guarantees. That's the most important thing I can promise you. There are no guarantees. There are no guarantees with process. So avoid publishers who promise this too. Um, no, no power over who gets covered, who doesn't, and they don't. They have contacts. The thing you bring up publicists into play is they do have contacts. So if they love you, if they get into it, maybe that extra foot will come in the door. Top tier placements are the toughest to get. 
you know, congratulations to our person who is doing the equipment to GMA, but it doesn't always happen. You know, did Oprah take every book? Are you kidding? You know, no. But there are tricks you can do to move yourself into that. You know, the X number of media, we guarantee so many media hits. And if they do that, they're using teeny tiny stations. And of course, a lot of it's internet now. A lot of it's internet now. Uh, so it, this whole thing in the marketing, publicity, learning this business is about relationships. It takes time to build them up. It takes time to build them up. All right, so key phrases for marketing. Be careful of these words. We're doing the mailing to thousands of fill in the blank. No good sales or marketing team is willing to promote your book nationally in spite of it not being wild available. Of course things can move. You know, if they believe in your book, they will get behind it. Um, avoid companies that promise that their reps will present your book to every bookstore in the United States. And then be careful of web or blog posting numbers padded by duplicate postings or multiple sites owned by the same vendor. So that means you need to probe down and figure out where they're connected with stuff and never pay anything totally up front, okay? Do, do, set it up as a graduated. Check with other people who have used them, not the references they give you. So put out, this is where you throw out in social media, hey, has anyone worked with, we get this in the LinkedIn group on Author U, has anyone worked with, can you give me feedback? And then the vomit starts. All right, distribution, no, no, sign up without doing your math, understand the cost, agreeing to fees and extras before you really understand what they are, not asking for a sample of a recent shipping fee report. You need to see what those charges are and look like. Agreeing to a contract longer than a one year, never do that. And signing up with a distributor requires that you use their marketing programs. That's, we're seeing some of that coming out. And not checking with, again, current and past clients. I just pulled away from a distributor and I'm getting ready to write a blog about it on why I got a divorce. So, you can go from an inconvenient truth to a reassuring lie. Authors who don't fail, they fail when they don't learn the lessons and mistakes. We all will make mistakes instead of biting it and eating it and not sharing what didn't work. Maybe you should share it because other people are saying, oh yeah, I had that experience. If there's a collective problem, People need to talk about it. All right, to recap, if it sounds too good to be true, avoid it. No one can guarantee you top tier publicity. Always talk with authors who have published more than one book with a publisher. Get that they love your money more than your book. That's really important. Um, get real marketing strategies that have been implemented, that are consistent with what you are about, your book's about, and Google all suppliers. Don't ever do that. I have 10 minutes, shoot. We're going to 15, well, we get to go to 15 after. Yeah. Okay, so okay. We're, we're 10 of 12. Okay. okay, yeah. When in doubt, don't do it. That's my advice. When in doubt, don't do it. All right, number three, use professional cover and interior designers. You've got several here. You and your book are as good as those who you hired to bring your vision and words alive. Here is my quick way to check out books. One, go into a bookstore. Find your favorite bookstore. Go back into the genre that your book would be long if they were carrying it. Take out every book that would be competitive to yours and drop it on the floor. Drop it on the floor. Get your, get your phone out of your camera. Now, you may attract people who are around you. <laughs> Good. You want their input, Dave. Absolutely. You want their input. And just what pops? What jumps? Look at the colors. Look at the font. Look at the images. Look at the placement of things. What pops? Take a picture. Now, go out to the front. The place where the New York publishers spend money to put their books on the table. Walk around slowly several times. What pops? What jumps out? I don't care if it's fiction or nonfiction. What really catches your eye? Take a picture. You are now looking at competitive current books covers bring it into play. That's just my quick, dirty trick to do. Author alert, mistakes have made. If your book looks like it's been self-published, don't publish it. <laughs> because everyone else will know you didn't take the time. I mean, how many of you have picked up books that are, I have never found a book that doesn't have a typo. <laughs> you know, they ha it happens. Yeah. Get over it. In fact, I had someone say, 
we, we just we have, we have a wonderful book that just went to print called the Bootlegger 44. It's this wild ass book about this story, this car that's taking its hands for 500 bucks. It's fabulous. I mean, I can see it in the movie. It's a fabulous movie. Um, and it, as the author says, all the parts are true except for the ones I made up. I love that philosophy. <laughs> so if, if you had it, and Charles spent a, a buku fortune on the cover because he wanted the number one hot rod illustrator to do it because that's his what? Market. And they will recognize Daryl Myad's art. In fact, part of the marketing policy is the poster is signed by him. They get with it. There's some very cool stuff that's coming along. But as we went through of it, one of, we found a typo, a German word, typo. Now I was like, well, America, we probably won't know it. But he knows it. We're going, and then he decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and leave it because there's got to be something wrong in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right, good books gone bad. When it comes to designing your book, some people are just the wrong fit. You need to pull away from them fairly quickly. If you feel they aren't getting it, move on. With that, number four, edit, edit, and more edit um, with that. So all it takes, it was a dark and stormy <laughs> night. Now, I have to tell you, I'm working on a book, and this is actually the opening line he needs to start with. It's not a fiction. He was, he is like the original James Bond. I mean, it's very stealth, the work we're doing with him. But, I mean, it was a dark and stormy night over the Balkans. <laughs> anyway, all authors need editors. So editing, you know, Webster's is your friend. Uh, you, you be familiar with the Chicago Manual. It's going to be your guide on that. You need to have, to, you know, don't rely this fully on, on, on all your areas, but really be able to slip in and out um, um, on that. Elements of style is good. I love Grammar Girl. Um, she has some fun stuff that she comes along with. You want to stay away from cliches, long sentences, paragraphs. I was a columnist for 10 years for the business journals. One thing I learned the value, there is great value in a one sentence paragraph. I learned that as a columnist. There is tremendous value in a one word sentence. If you have to write shit, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's an <laughs> adjective, it brings it all out for you, okay? <laughs> You edit your manuscript before you send it to a professional editor. You need to be the first round and be ruthless. You know, and if you've got a, story, so a line about your dog, Muffy, I mean, does it really move the story forward? <laughs> so it's, it's really, and so I go after <coughs> authors for paragraph perpetuity. You know, cut them up. Remember, your eyeball read in that. All right, number five, you have to create your, your author and book platforms. We're going to be really getting into that this afternoon. So, but there are the components. It's not all the people you own on social media. You need to understand that. People think, oh, it's, oh, it's okay. So, oh, Judith, you have a huge platform. For, so I have 31,000 Twitter followers on my personal account. I've got 22,000 on the author you account. I've got all this. It's not. It's part of it. Your platform is your vision. What do you see? Where do you feel it going? What's the shape? Who's my buyer? Who am I going to help? What's it going to come in? My vision. It's the passion you bring to the party. It's your commitment. It's your commitment. And commitment has time, energy, and investment components to it. And when you have this little magic mix, you've got the perfect storm, the perfect stew, because the people will come. Now, I know in media, there are a lot of radio stations, actually, if you, they, will, they will check out your clout, Scar. They will check out how many followers you do have on social media. And I know that in Denver, there are several stations that if you don't have at least 500 Twitter followers, we don't want you. Because what do they want you to do before you're on? Shout it out. So by the way, get your own hashtag. Start using a hashtag. Like I use hashtag author you a lot. Start using those kind of things. I mean, sometimes I use other people's hashtags, which is even more powerful. So, and that's a whole other strategy. We're not into that today. But that's, those are the creations of you bring this into play. Niching is critically important for power. The kiss of death is when I say, tell me who your book's for. <gasps> Everybody, really, it is not. 
the more you can narrow that, the bigger that niche you can claim, the bigger the market you have. So as you funnel it down and narrow it, you can become the explosive GoPro. And what I ended up doing in healthcare, which I never went to, they came to me. They said, we need you, you need to write a book. We need you. We need you. I didn't want to go to them, but they became explosive for me. Because they knew they needed me, I just didn't know it. And I became the go-to. If you've got a toxic person, you get Bryles in. She'll kick their butt, get them out. That's what I became known as. All right, so the more you niche yourself as an author, the bigger your market will become. And as you market, start making these kind of posters and do that. Get familiar with PicMonkey and, um, and, and Canva and start doing that. If you follow me, you'll find I put like three posters up a day. It's that visual that people get getting sucked into. And, and some will be, there's always going to be one from my quotation book, Snappy, Sassy, Salty. I always have one for that. But I also have others that I put together. Some are just words. Some have images in them. But start doing that because it engages people. Number six, you've got to get focused and become that CMO, that chief marketing officer on that. So it's market, market, market. Um, and then, so if you'll notice that, see this little sheepy guy? Okay, so I use these all the time. They have different variations. Oh my gosh, they're eating money out of the grass. They're looking at book sales. They're doing all kinds of things. And people expect to see that. It makes it fun. At least that's fun for me. If you're not having fun, this is not fun, let me tell you, because it's work. You know, you have to have the goit factor as you go through that. That goit factor is you've got to work your tush off. You've got to do that. All right, so it's about connecting. And when you start doing that in their marketing, it positions yourself, it does sell books, you make money, you have fun. I think those are all good things. So I will tell you, from speaking, as I started positioning myself, and I do it out from 1987 to 2013, I made grossed. 2734684 from my mouth. That's from my mouth, from getting in front of people, from going to my market, from speaking in healthcare, from keynoting, for example, the oncology nurses, or going to a group of docs, because they can be toxic too, as you know, <laughs> um, to doing those things. I went to my market. I subscribed to every journal. I, I, I would stand in line at a grocery store and look at people's veins on their arms thinking, mm, good stick. <laughs> you know, I became so engrossed in the field, I knew it. You would have thought I was an MD or at least a nurse. You would have thought because I knew the jargon. I knew what was going on. I read more than most of the professionals did because that was part of my business. That was part of my business. All right, so from that, my personal record, 16,000 in five hours. It was these combination of these three books. We would bundle them together. We would put them together. That's a lot of books to sign. The trick you do when you're in big groups, you always pre-sign all your books. So all you have to do is add the name. You have your little slogan. I had a different slogan for every book. You just add in the name, and then you can actually converse with them just a little bit when you have those lines. Total revenues through 2013. Between book sales and speaking was over $4.8 million. Can you make a living in this business? Yes, you can. But you have to market. You have to be focused. You have to have those platforms. You have to be willing to work your tush off. So three words that always drives me. This is my first day of kindergarten. Snappy. I want people to be snappy in their marketing. They need to be a little sassy, a little pithy, a little salty. And if you think you're marketing to everybody, you're going to get in trouble. If you try to drive down the whole road of being politically correct every time, I am not politically correct. I am a proud member of the OBC. I'm a member of the Old Broads Club. And when you remember, when you move into the OBC, you don't worry so much about that. But I am snappy, sassy, and salty. All right, the lie of Goya is to get off your ass. I think, get off your tush. So, and then number seven is you've got to become a rock star pitcher. 
you've got to become a rock star pitcher. We're going to spend time this afternoon on how to pitch. We have a full session module on that. But and the pitcher is, and, and I, you know, I really was impressed with the 25 second. You did really well, actually, I thought, coming around. Um, but you've got to pitch, and you've got to really figure out who you're talking to and how to get it in for that platform as you bring it together. So here's what I want all of you to do right now. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Open them. Who is the reader that is directly in front of you, Judy? What does she look like? What are her fears? What are her hopes? Is she married? Is she single? The person that I'm writing for is the person that I'm writing for is a business owner who mm -hmm. is 50 to 75 and she wants to get her information out there, but she's really good at what she does and she's terrified of speaking in public. Okay. What's her hobbies? Uh, gardening, uh, she likes Pinterest, and she loves reading. And what's she fearful of? She's fearful of being embarrassed in front of a crowd. Okay. So as you start narrowing down and you keep adding more to that mix, it makes a huge difference because she's not writing for everyone. We're over 50, all right? The rest of the, you kids here, you're out. <laughs> Don't pick up her book because her stories that she has to use, her examples she has to use, has to be for that 50 to 75 crowd. And the more you narrow that down, the power you bring to your writing, to your presentation, and to your marketing. Does that make sense? And yet when I ask authors, tell me about your book. Well, it's about a book, you know, it's about a group. They're a couple. Yeah, it's about a couple, and uh, they went on a trip. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Did anything happen? <laughs> they had sex. Ooh. Ooh. Seven children? I mean, they, they get in and they cannot narrow it down. They can't narrow it down. You have to learn. It used to say, you're ele you know, you had like a one minute elevator speech, then went to the. You have to say succinctly within 15 seconds exactly what that book is about. Michael does pitches all the time. And he, I, he's probably heard, I remember one time hearing Michael um, saying that I know in five minutes whether or not I've got a book. Three, he's down to three. Okay, and yet the stumbling that they go through, because they want to give you the life history of how brought them up to their epiphany. Who cares? Who gives a twiddly dit? What are you going to do to relieve my what will you do to solve my problem? What will you do to make me laugh till I'm incontinent? What will you do? Pitching is just so critical. It's your hook. It's got to be with your book title, your speech titles, your points that you use as you go through within a speech or within the outline of your chapters. It's got to have that benefits and value. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? So your pitch will be used in all social media. It will be used in your snail mail. It will be used in your email. It's going to be used in your phone. And it's going to be used, you're going to use it, when people describe it. This afternoon, you're going to come up with six key words that will be your pitch. I'm not going for 15 seconds. I'm going for five. Why do authors fail? They don't have editing. They try to do everything themselves from their cover. Oh, oh, I'm a graphic designer. I can do my cover. Oh, please save me. You might add to it. You might give some influence to it. But keep your hands off the cover because you need to work with professionals Who's my cover designers in here? How many of you have had to undo stuff that comes in? A lot. OK. Jim? A lot. OK. So deal with people who this is what, well, I could use Word. Oh, no. Yeah, you could. That's how, that, it's called a draft. That's your draft. You put it together. But don't, don't think you're going to lay out your book. Well, I laid it out exactly in words. This is how many I, you know, words I want on pages. No. Mm -hmm. It is totally different by the time we start going into it. 
I know certainly when I get a hands on a book, I've got call outs, I've got all kinds of things that I've added in to change how that baby is presented in roles. You got to be careful of publishing predators. You've got to understand that this is a business, not a non business, if you want to be seriously successful. And if you don't have a platform, if you don't know who you're going to, if you don't have that vision, that, that passion, if you're not willing to invest your time, energy, and money, you're going to get in trouble. And then that poor pitching with nail marketing. All of those things come into play on that. And then I should probably throw it one more thing why authors fail, is that we get caught up in the squirrel factor. I don't know if any of you have ever been caught up in the squirrel factor, but it's like, Whoa, oh God, i got to go do that one too. Um, and you get pulled away, and you get sucked in, or it could be, oh no, it's another email, I need to do all my email right now. No, you need to be writing. You can catch your email at the end of the day. I mean, that's the squirrel factor. It's just whatever comes along, and just, I'm there. Bling or anything. And sometimes you have to tell people when you're so deep dive into your writing, you're moving on, you have to say, you know, David, when your friend comes and says, oh my God, there is this, that you, we've got to get to the car races, there's the most amazing thing, and he has to say, you know, the most important thing right now is to get my book done. So I'm going to need to take a pass. Let's do it next year. You have to be myopic, myopic at times. And rushing to publish. That is a kiss of death. I've got to get it out by next month. Really, do you? Is there something special coming along? No, it's just on my agenda, ID. Well, it may not be ready, but, but I've got to get it ready. I mean, we're going to go. We're going to push it. Don't rush to publish. Sometimes things need to take a little time in seeding it. All right, so successful authors celebrate, which is always, and that's what you need to look like um, as we have it. So as we come in and write and wrapping up here, it, one of my personal keepers is, is don't do well what you have no business doing. If you're not a book designer, you hire a book designer. If you're not a cover designer, you hire a cover designer. If editing is not your forte, you need someone who edits. And even if you edit, you need an editor on top of you. We all do. We all do. And I mean, it, I, when I was going back to be on GMA with my first book, The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy, I'm, you know, in first class. They treated me very nicely, and I'm reading my book. I, well, I should read my book again. It's amazing how some authors have never read their book. But, um, <laughs> but since I wrote it. Um, and I'm reading the book, and I'm thinking, Oh my God, what was I thinking? Why did I, write? why did I say it this way? How many of you have gone through your books thinking, what was I thinking? What was I, well that's called the next edition. Right Gordon? That's the next edition. Right, so, but, so you bring in the people. You bring in the people who will make you shine. Because my objective is that whatever you create, it's a book you don't regret that you can stand beside. I mean, I, I'm going to show you a cover this afternoon. I have a cover that wants to make me vomit <laughs> that a New York publisher, I mean, it makes me vomit every time I see it. And, and if you have to apologize for a cover, guess what? It shouldn't have been there. Shouldn't have been there. So I have a couple of things. I have a, I'd love to have you come play with me. The author's arc. We do, we, we've just, we're starting the first one on the 16th, but it's, this is all online and Skype webinars. That's great fun. You've got a flyer on that. Um, I do an intensive event, and what I want you to do when we take our break is make sure that you give me your card. It's in this fabulous-looking plastic pitcher. Yes. Um, and that, I, I love high-tech. Love high-tech. And by the way, you know, I, I've thrown out a couple of numbers I have. If you talked to me about social media three years ago, here's what I said. No frickin' way. Am I going to get involved with that mess? I am all over it. Because social media is the town hall for your marketing. And you need, if it's no freaking way are you getting involved, you hire someone who will do it for you. But you have to be involved if your game plan is to move books. If your game plan is to move books. So I'm going to give away either um, a spot on this. This is worth 500 bucks. It's two intense days just with me, August 1st and 2nd, in Denver. You come, um, and, and or you can have a choice to go to the Author You um, Extravaganza, which is three days 
in Denver, May 7th through 9th next year, where I bring in all the top publishing professionals. Mark Coker was one of my keynotes this year. Um, we do intense one-on-ones. We do a variety of things. So it's, it's not a pitch, and I will tell you, it's not a pitch fest. People don't pitch. It is an information fest, all right? So you'll, you have choice, and, and whoever wins, you get a choice, what you want. All right, and here's where you can follow me. Um, I encourage you, you know, Author U is um, a sister, affiliate of VEPA. Um, and the bookshepherd.com, I do two blogs a week on the Book Shepherd. On authoru.org, I do three blogs a week. And that the Monday and, and Friday is a fresh blog. On Thursday, you get the top 10 Twitter tweets of the week um, going on. Follow me, uh, play with me on my Book Shepherd or Author U and all that, um, and join in and, I, and, and get involved with the Author U group. There's a lot of activity. I would encourage you to start a group um, on that, but that's going to be more of a group for you. If you want to do something broader, we decided to go broader because we have so many members who are out of Colorado on us. All right, and if I can help any of you, that is my personal email. You've got my personal phone number um, with that. And we are at 1215, so I want to thank you for being here with me today. <laughs> Let you know that if you get the author, I gave you a little page with prices, deals. If you buy this book. Like yes. I pay you for an hour or two of consulting? Oh, yes. Yep. Book okay. Shepherd has all that on there. New Yorkie? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Looks self-published. Whoops. I wouldn't put your I wouldn't put your picture on it. Get it off. Really? Yeah. It's just it's it's. Um, everything in my genre looks like that. Well, I, I would do some other changes going on. Okay. On that. And this needs and, to be and, rewritten. And for you sure. don't have a headline to suck people in. Hi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that was my Daily Mail article, and if you talk about pitching. And would you like to read a book on the way home? Sure. Yes. So, Great. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I keep getting notes of people. So Good. Wonderful. Having well, fallen to okay. tears by the time All right. So I want you to go to uh, Marilyn Vanderbur's uh, deal. She was a Miss America. Her father raped her for years and years and years. And she has become a global sensation with what she does. But it's Marilyn Vanderbur. Do you need any food? No, I'm fine. Are you sure? I guess I'll just do hot water. Vanderbur or one word. Yes. Yeah, Marilyn no, Vanderbur. Okay. Like yeah. Hey. Hi, Judith. I'm the guy who writes reads faces. Yeah. Very, very broad subject. Yeah, I like it though. Oh my God, it can that can open up business, that can open up sales, that can open up all the kinds of stuff. Exactly. The, the, so the question is, the first book was just introducing face reading. Here's 12 things you can see on a face out yes. of a potential yes. 60. Yes. I'd really, I think I need to niche this more though to have a. I would do. Here's what I would do. I'd be opening That's up the book, and it's important. I don't know what your book looks. Like. Is this your book? No, it's my book. <laughs> it's my book. Um, so I would be looking at. Uh, you want to go into five by eight, five right. and a half by eight. It's more. It's your book. Your, your book implies intimacy. You know, just by its intimacy. So the smaller book sizes have that. I would do a matte cover. Don't do gloss. Do matte because it's more of a touch sensation. And I would make sure that you would have stories in each section of how someone used those principles and reach it out so they can say, oh, my God, that's me. That that would be my one key tip to start with. So it could... The stories could be about romance. They could be. They're all about relationships. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, so Anything. It could be, about, it could be yeah. about business yeah. relationships. Yeah. 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 But not. You're not saying. Just should be about a personal romance relationship. No. Okay. No. About relationships. That's the. Okay. All right. Hey. Hi, the Veggie Queen. Ah, I love that. And I and I love your site. And uh, I looked at it before I came because my site is purple and green. Yeah. Oh, I do everything. Usually I wear purple or green. That's that's part of it. Everything I do, and you'll see my slides are either always going to be purple and green. But I am just finishing up a book, so. Good. Yeah. No. Well, be yeah. Be consistent to, with that. Okay. All right. I have to go back to my computer. Right. Which is you want to check? Should I write it out to you? Sign it for you. And your name is? P-E-N-N-I-E. Oh. I'm a stress relief. Well, I love that. Also, integrated care. Okay. All right. Love to talk to you. Wonderful talk. I'll be here this afternoon. Author in you. All right. So I have this ready for you. Okay. All right. So and you get this too, right? All right, then did you see this too? If you get all of them, it's for 85. Let's do this. That's the deal. Yeah. Okay.
and this is Penny, all right? Penny. There's no nutty questions. Well, actually, I like nutty questions. Pitch rhymes with niche. Yeah. What are the top three niches involving now? Uh huh. What are the top ones? Uh -huh. You know what? I well, God save us from another vampire book. Um, <laughs> Fa non fiction well in the fiction is fantasy fantasy is huge 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 um, and that's certainly where all the ebooks are going from for, for top business is still there but it's just really that the niche is yours and then you just have to go to it and it could be it could not even be on the scale but if you're the unique player Don that's all you need that's all you need okay what you doing this guy Oh, this is yours. Penny. penny, Penny, Penny. Got it. I was, I was already, already over there. There you go. Oh, and that's. It's it's uh, right now it's 497. It'll go to 597 on of July 1st. Yeah. I gave it. I gave everything. It's on the table. There's a packet on the table that looks like this. This is the extravaganza. But I'd love to have you come. Is this for you? You just want that book? It's for me. Yes. Okay. You don't want to get the other book where you get this one free, huh? That much cash on me. Ah. Oh, I do. I'm waiting for this to. What is this? Uh, So, you just sign that, and here's your copy, okay? And your guide. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to get change. Well, no, I'm not going to diddle with that. You sure? Okay. Thank you. Yes. So this is my proof. What did you, yes. If I gave you this as a book, what would you charge me to take that with me, take a look at it, and your tell me what you Your book is too it? big. You've got the wrong size. Can you change it? The book's too big. This is too big. You don't do six by nine books anymore. Okay. This should be a five by eight. Okay. Mat's fine. I would keep the mat for the, the cover. Okay. Can I just give you the whole thing and okay. pay you for feedback? Sure. All right. I'll give you, quick, I'll give you a quick feedback, okay? okay? All right. Got it. So is your email in here? Okay, so you want to make sure that you have in your About the Author page your full email and still throw them all the, always to that. Okay. The other thing is you want to make sure you do is use um, uppercase 7-0. Uh, 7-0. 7 so that you use a capital um, in those things. And same with your emails. Okay. You know, like here it is, you've got TAN graphics, so capital T, capital G, right. capital I, capital uh, da, 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 photo. Make it, you, all you do is see a bunch of letters here, okay. number, and you've got to help people with their reading right. on that. On the, these kind of things. Cute. Are you gonna are you gonna do this in color or black and white? No, it's gonna look like that. It's gonna this is. All right, I would the first thing Catherine I would really do is get you into a smaller book. This is too thin. You can't even get a spine here. Right. Okay. So drop it down. Okay, okay. great. All right. So mark, mark it up, take it with you. Okay. Hi. Hi. I wish I could stay this afternoon, but I have to go to a memorial. Oh, 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 you know Man, I have had three deaths this last month. It's been crazy. It's just like, either someone said, you need to start getting some younger friends. And I said, well, one was 50. That's pretty young. Yeah. The 80, the 80 plus. I understand totally. You need a better, you need better, you don't have, it, it, this doesn't pop for you. Look, see how this kind, see how this is kind of done? See how this, but one word, you know, what's this is a question, one word, everything. You've got to look into the way your headlines are. So they pop out different. This gets buried. Empower you to take care of your own health by giving you the knowledge. What does? What empowers me to take care of my health? Learn how to live a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so you need to come up with a, you know, snappy, sassy, salty. Yeah. Yes, you need yeah. you need to do that. So how many cop are you be are you be well pressed? I am. Okay, great. All right. And you're doing for who are you printing? Where are you printing? Uh, Ingram. 
Grim. Grim, okay. And you wanted this to be separate like that, or is it just you ran yeah. out of room? Yeah, okay. no. Okay. Okay, here's one of the boo-boos that always happens. When you give um, these live links, because mm -hmm. this is a live link, yeah. well, it's irrelevant here. The best thing to do is to tell people to go to the website and search, use the keyword to search because links get broken, I'm gonna guarantee. Links yeah. get broken, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're irrelevant yeah. on that. Yeah. So try to get away from all this HTTP. Yeah. You, you can dump www now, yeah. capitalize, vid, jog, video, capital D, capital J, dot com, and, and I would just say search for, um, that yeah. kind of thing. And it, it's yeah. friendlier, and people yeah. get that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, that would be my quick recommendation yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think, you know, it's because the book was written, most of it was written in 2008, so... So it's five years old, seven yeah. years old. Yeah. Well, it's, the second edition came out in, in 2012. But, Got it. But some where's your, where's about the author? Where's your page about the author? Where's that? Voila! Voila. Yeah. Okay, so here's, yeah. here's the two things. Now, yeah. you, so you do consulting? Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a massage therapist. But you have a business. Yes? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. Okay, so you want to have a very distinct about the author, yes. what brings you to the party, yes. so to speak, and you'll have your website or anything. Yeah. Then you want to be how to work with Marsha. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you have your services in here. Yeah. This is an advertisement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Much. Yeah. Okay. And you don't need all these, you know, here's another thing. That is a myth. Um, a professor of clinical medicine, okay, so, okay, so, see Collie Behavior Departments, and th this is, I'd, you know, I'd rather see your picture here. Um, I think you get, you get a lot of wasted space going on. I would go into, if, if what would engage people to want to buy this book? and you cut down this stuff. What you do is these longer quotes, if you've got more, those go into front matter, and you do that, and you just take a key killer line. You, you're giving up a lot of marketing copy in here. Mm -hmm. Most people don't pay attention to endorsements. They, they think whenever one they're bought, or they're a friend, or you're connected, or whatever. Am I being too blunt? No, no, I'm no, blunt. I, I, I totally agree, and it's really funny. There's a couple of books that I read, and I went, why did you put that on the back oh, cover? No. That isn't making me buy books. Thank you. You want? Okay, you got it. That was fun. Thank you. That worked for you? Absolutely. Is it J U D Y? 